We didn't plan this, but it turns out a story we couldn't fit into the Halloween show actually has a direct connection to the month of November. That's when Miles Fukunaga was executed for a tragic murder because he was desperate for money. And Lopaka Kapanui says his spirit still seeks peace. Imagine that the, you are the 19-year-old son of a Japanese family. You are the oldest. All of the responsibility of the family falls on your shoulders. You graduate high school, you begin to work, but you fall sick and you can't provide for your family the way you are supposed to. And you feel so dejected that you attempt suicide and it fails. And so there you are one day at home by yourself, your mother somewhere in the house. You hear a knock at the door and you listen to the conversation and it's the man from the Hawaiian Trust Company telling your mother that if she can't afford the rent of $35 a month, they're gonna kick you out. And he doesn't understand and has no sympathy that you are sick and your father can only work one job. And so you think to yourself how terrible this is. But no one knows that you're a fan of those famous kidnapping stories from those papers in Los Angeles. And you think, if I could kidnap and ransom the only son of the executive director of the Hawaiian Trust Company, Frederick Jameson, Maybe I can take that ransom money, give it to my parents, and send them back to Japan like they want. We're standing at the grave of Miles Yutaka Fukunaga, who at 19 years old, called the chief registrar at Punahou Schools, his voice disguised with a German accent, asking if there are any boys at the school by the name of Jameson. The voice on the other side of the phone said, we're calling from Queens Hospital. Gil Jameson's mother has got into a very bad car accident. She's in the emergency room. She's in a bad way. We were hoping that we could send one of the hospital orderlies to the school to get the boy and bring him to, to the hospital. The woman agreed. A short time later, a black Packard taxi cab rolls into the driveway of Punahou School. Seated in the back is 19-year-old Miles Fukunaga, disguised as a hospital orderly. Black glasses, hair slicked back. Later on, the principal and the chief registrar would tell the police there was nothing unusual about this young Japanese man. But as it left the driveway of Punahou School, we should have figured something, out, uh, something was wrong. Because instead of turning right on Wilder to go to Queens Hospital, the vehicle went left. Miles Fukunaga tells the police later on, I tried to talk to the boy on the way, he wouldn't talk. He seemed worried about his mother. I tried to give him candy and he wouldn't take it. It was at that point I realized the boy was a liability. And so they're dropped off at the Royal Hawaiian Hotel. They walk across Kalakaua Avenue to the back of the old Seaside Hotel to a thicket of kiawe trees, sort of like this. According to the story, Miles puts the boy in front of him. They both go in like this. And from his back pocket, Miles pulls out a tempered steel chisel and begins to bash the boy over the head. But he said at four feet, nine inches tall, the little holly boy was quite powerful. And so he literally had to grab him by the throat, throw him on the ground, sit on his chest, and throttle him until the life left his body. September 22nd, Miles Fukunaga is found out. A year and two months later, he is hunted to death in Oahu prison. The stone with the characters carved on it is from the Waianae district. Miles Fukunaga is put here. They say the characters mean Inga Zuka, Stone of Redemption. Some of the people in this area think it has something to do with karmic redemption. Perhaps he who shall return lifetime after lifetime knowing only bad karma. And so what's the spooky part about this story? The spooky part is one night had a group here talking about Miles, went home to my apartment, fell asleep on the living room floor, woke up at three o'clock in the morning for no reason. As I woke up and looked down the hallway, there was Miles Fukunaga, slight built, short, young Japanese boy, white long sleeve shirt, rolled up like this, black tie, slacks. He looked at me and then walked into my bedroom. I got up, ran down the uh, hallway, went into my bedroom, the lights were on, the ironing board was still out with the iron still on. It was now orange with heat and having been on for at least four hours. 
The curtains were blowing toward the iron. And I turned it off and I realized maybe he was helping me out. After that happened, the room was inundated with the smell of candles. For some reason, something told me to come back here. And when I returned about three o'clock in the morning, this spot right here was filled with melted candles. And so it turns out, for some reason, Miles Fukunaga does not light candles lit at this headstone. But I want you to take a careful look at this headstone. Miles Fukunaga's brother said the headstone is just like Miles Fukunaga himself, who in life was a loner, had no friends. And if you look around this graveyard, you will see that there is no other headstone like it. And that this is the only one of its kind. The holidays are coming up fast. So if you're looking for unique gift ideas, why not give experiences for your friends and family that they'll never forget? Like gift certificates for one of Lopaka's chicken skin tours. <laughs>